Hi everybody. A warm good morning to all of you. Welcome to one more new topic called Xenobiotics. Now when you hear this term, uh, you might find it's something new. And the term Xenos itself, uh, it means something which is being found to be strange in nature. And uh, when something strange or something foreign happens to enter into your body, uh, either through your foot or as your medicine, then you call it as to be as a xenobiotic. Now, what is this and where does it come from? Of course, uh, when any anything which is not normally produced in the body come from the environment, uh, now it might be from uh, as a part of a pharmaceutical industry or from your chemical industry or anything like that when it is being foreign or strange to you and uh, it enters into your body then you call it as a xenobiotic now in the case of chemical industries we produce a large amount of plastics pesticides dyes and additives and they happen to enter into your body either through inhalation or through your food or through different other ways. So in that cases, those substances are considered to be as xenobiotics. Then it can also be in another way. Now, for example, you might be taking lots of synthetic as well as uh, natural drugs, which, which do, normally do not occur in your body. When you get an infection, you might be taking that. That is also referred to as a xenobiotic. So, the unusual presence of any substance in high concentrations is regarded as a xenobiotic when it occurs in your body. Now, for example, the presence of antibiotic drugs in the human body, which may not be produced by the body itself or is not a normal part of the diet, is referred to as a xenobiotics. And sometimes uh, we might also define uh, xenobiotic. Uh, even if it is a natural substance because it finds a, when it finds a way into the humans or the other animals now you might uh, let me just explain that to you normally you will think that uh, only the foreign substances are considered to be as xenobiotics but sometimes even a naturally occurring substance okay uh, when it comes into a human when it comes into your body or when it enters into the animals in an unnatural way, then also we will consider to be a, it as a xenobiotic. So we will go into the details of that. Now, such xenobiotics, uh, when they enter into a body, what is the fate of that in your body? Or what is the environmental fate, possible environmental fate also of this? Let's just have a look into that. Sometimes some xenobiotics will not undergo any conversion at all. That is, as they are, they will remain as such. And they remain unaltered or unchanged and they will have a dead end where they will get accumulate within the soil, water or wherever or in the atmosphere uh, within the ecosystem. So some xenobiotics will be remaining as such, which is not undergoing change. That is, after its synthesis, it remains like that itself. It is not being broken down into smaller parts. It is not broken down into uh, any tiny molecule and it remains as such. That is resulting in a dead end. Now, some of these antibiotics might undergo physical or chemical changes. Now, for example, photochemical, uh, the, you, by the action of the sun as well as by the ke uh, chemical reactions and all, they might undergo some modifications and become less complex compounds. And then they might go into the sand, water or the atmosphere. That is one thing. And some of these antibiotics might undergo uh, what? microbial conversions or the biotic conversions. It could be microbial or any other biotic agent also. Uh, that they will act on these antibiotics. Sometimes it will be converted into a different component that is called a transformation or the core metabolic reaction or they might be degraded into, uh, degraded means broken down into smaller parts in simple words. So they might be broken down into uh, into, sim uh, into simpler particles or a partial degradation can happen or sometimes they will undergo complete mineralization or complete degradation 
or finally evolving carbon dioxide water and inorganic substances so depending upon the nature of the cenobitic or depending upon the chemical composition of the cenobitic it can undergo three different routes either the no conversion at all or the abiotic conversion abiotic conversion is something where non living agents are acting on the cenobitic and it is acting now the non living agents can be uh, light that is photo con photo uh, photo conversion or it can be chemical agents then it becomes a chemical reactions or it may be photochemical in nature uh, when both acts these are some examples of that or they can undergo biotic conversions and sometimes partial conversion can happen or complete degradation also can happen so the cenobiotic has a different fate within the environment as well as in the body also so that is a case of cenobiotics now cenobiotics can be classified and right, considered to be as two types exogenous uh, cenobiotics as well as endogenous cenobiotics now what do you mean by exogenous of course the term exogenous itself is indicating that it is a foreign substance uh, which are normally not produced by the organism or which is normally not ingested by the organism and they gain entry into the organism through either food or medicine or through inhalation from the environment and you can see that the drugs we take the food additives that we add into a food the pollutants which come in from the environment the insecticides the other carcinogens which we have these are all entering into our body from outside and normally they do not uh, be produced by the our body so in such cases the foreign substances which are normally not been produced by our body and which gain entry into our body are considered to be as exogenous cenobitics now we also have another case where we have endogenous uh, xenobiotics now here these are the xenobiotics which are been uh, what these are not in fact foreign substances but they because they are already been produced in a body but they have a similar effect to the exogenous xenobiotics now why do they have a, a similar effect because normally these substances are not been produced at a very high level within the body but due to certain uh, unfavorable conditions or due to imbalance or something like that the substances which have been produced in your body itself might be in a higher concentration and produce a a, a xenobiotic effect they are referred to as the endogenous xenobiotics so now coming to bilirubin bilirubin has a controlled level uh, but sometimes they may be produced in a larger quantities then it will be considered to be as a xenobiotic now for example another thing is a bile acids we also we have bile normally within our body but when they are being produced at a very larger rate uh, sometimes they might act as a xenobiotic say similar is the case of steroids when steroids are uh, produced in a large amount within your body you might get certain bad effects within your body so that in such cases they will serve as a what as a foreign substance it, though it is not a foreign substance it might act as a foreign substance and cause harm to your body now let's see what are these uh, xenobiotics now anything now if you add some additive colors into your food okay uh, that is a xenobiotic because it is not been produced by your body now if you take some phenol phenol is what it is a chemical which has been used as a it is infected and all that so if that happens to into your body that's another case or if you have some hydrocarbons what are hydrocarbons it can be anything any any compound which is having carbon hydrogen and oxygen if it is not been produced in your body and if it enters now so commonly used examples we have petrol diesel kerosene and all that comes under hydrocarbons then we have the drugs Uh, you should remember all the antibiotics which we have are been produced by some microbes against the other microbes and that is uh, in the natural environment to limit the growth of some microbes the microbe uh, another microbes now for example if you have a microbe x and it does not uh, like another microbe y and it wants to reduce the growth of y x will produce a 
antibiotic in the environment so that Y cannot grow. That is what is an antibiotic. We are taking that antibiotic and we are having it to prevent the growth of Y within our body. So, uh, even the normal drug antibiotic which we have has been produced by someone outside our body, not by our own. So, the sources of cinebiotics could be of a wide range. It would be from the uh, smoking, uh, from the cigarette that we smoke, or it might be through the drugs which we have, or it might be from the food that we have in the case of mushrooms and all that, or in uh, sometimes you might add some additives into your uh, food that you have, or sometimes it could be any chemicals, or it could be even the cosmetics which we use or the paints that which we use to in our house or it could be any cleanser or any chemical or sometimes even the industry. So the xenobiotics find a wide range of uh, sources and if you go to look uh, a statistical thing you can see that uh, most of the human exposure happens within the environment and Almost 48 percentage of these antibiotics are coming from the environment, and followed by that we have uh, the uh, we have a 15 percentage of exposure either through drugs or through the toxic foods, and then we also have the role of cosmetics, which contribute to about 12 percentage of our xenobiotic exposure, and the remaining comes into 10 percentage. Now, let's see what are the different pollution. Now, if you go to consider environmental pollution from the environment, where do you get? You might get some pesticides. Now, for example, dimethoate, phosphanol, quinalpose. These are all chemicals which you, pesticides which you use. They can, when you apply them into the environment or onto the plants, uh, from the plants we might get it. Or in the atmosphere or in the soil or in the water, they might remain. The same way chemicals such as carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, these are all examples of xenobiotics which cause environmental pollution. Or sometimes even radiations. Now, for example, uh, too much of UV rays, okay, uh, too much of UV rays might come into the environment because, you know, what is the reason of that? Or sometimes cosmic rays can come. And as a part of that, we get a large amount of diseases. Now, for example, you might get a lung disease like asthma, uh, bronchitis, or sometimes uh, when you breathe asbestos, asbestos, uh, when you breathe in that into your body, uh, you might get a lung disease. Or sometimes silicosis can happen when silica dust or clay is being inhaled by the pottery makers and all that. So, when these pollutants uh, or when these uh, when these agents happen to enter into your body, they also re uh, result in the formation of large amount of diseases. And uh, the lung diseases are some, then sometimes you can also get reproductive disorders. For example, infertility, miscarriage, uh, still birth, uh, birth defects and all that is there. Or you can also have other related diseases. Now, for example, by carbon monoxide poisoning, or you might, you know, when carbon monoxide happens to enter your body for a long time, you might even die. Uh, you might have heard about the instances in which uh, a family was being, uh, what? Uh, a family was being found dead in a restaurant in the morning. And they noticed that it was mainly because of the formation of carbon dioxide from the AZ. They went for a, um, a few years back, it was, they went for a, holiday to some uh, resort and in the morning the whole family was being found to be killed and the main reason which they found out was the uh, what is it the air cooler or the air conditioner was not functioning properly and it was releasing a gas called carbon monoxide and that was responsible for the death of the people so that is because the cenobiotic was being released in a large amount concentration then pneumoconiosis that could happen, radiation to exposure could, uh, or the radiation exposure can cause defects, or arsenic hands and feet. When arsenic uh, is a heavy metal, when that happens, you might get other diseases. Or sometimes uh, it might enter through your food. Now, for example, you can see 
the pesticides, herbicides, growth hormones, all these can enter into it. Uh, you remember in, in the case of uh, Coca-Cola in Kerala, when Coca-Cola's uh, uh, industry was there in Kerala, we also found lots of pesticides in the water bodies surrounding them in Plavchi Meda. So that was a, that was a, a xenobiotic infiltration into the water. Of course, then regulations brought out uh, were being brought about in a more strict manner to make changes. And another thing which you can have is, uh, now we have Chinese salt or the monosodium glutamate, which we add into the food. Uh, that at a large amount, if you add, uh, it is harmful for your body. Or if you have artificial sweetness, that could also cause different effects. Now you can have immediate effects of headache, altered concentrations or long-term effects like risk of cancer and uh, CBD and all will be there. Then bisphenol and surfactants. Bisphenol is a component which comes from the plastics that which we use. And uh, the more frequently we use uh, uh, plastic bottles and all that for drinking purpose and all that, uh, what happens is some components of these plastics will infiltrate into your body. And bisphenol, when it enters into your body, uh, it could lead to hormonal imbalances and also malabsorption syndromes. Now, you can, uh, you can also correlate right now the chances of PCOD or polycystic ovary syndrome and all that has been found to be a little bit higher right now My, uh, uh, among the females uh, or you can also see that uh, hormonal changes are uh, happen even in males at a very different rate at a very uh, high rate right now and these are all could be contributed by all these symbiotics which we are having in uh, or which happen to enter into our body so that's the reason why which we say that uh, 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 avoid drinking water from the water bottles, especially uh, the uh, plastic water bottles, mainly because the plastic will get degraded and some amount of plastic will happen to enter our body. And moreover, some plastic when it gets exposed to uh, uh, what happens to heat or to uh, heat, what happens, it gets converted into carcinogens also. So it's always good to have uh, drink water in what uh, uh, glass bottles or steel bottles which are less prone to degradation. Then you can also get heavy metal sometimes in your water. For example, arsenic hands and foods, that's a disease which can come or sometimes tumors and cancer can result from it. Now, the drugs which we have. The drugs which we have, of course, some antibiotics are good which we have uh, and um, but some of them will be harmful to some human. And some people also do have some allergy to some antibiotics. That's what we say that you need to find out. Uh, sometimes they will say, oh, I have an allergy to penicillin or something like that. So if you are allergic to it, you might get some hypersensitivity. That is called hypersensitivity. Any allergic reaction is considered to be as hypersensitivity. Or sometimes you can also have a abnormal condition called autoimmunity. Now, what is autoimmunity? Autoimmunity is a condition in which your body is uh, producing antibodies or antibodies or it is acting against your own cells and tissues. That is, your cells itself will try to break down your some tissues. That is called autoimmunity. We will be learning that in a next, in a different session. Or sometimes you can have certain infections due to the presence of these antibodies these different uh, chemicals or you can also have lymphoproliferative disorders now what uh, what is lymphoproliferative diseases this is a condition in which the lymphocytes okay lymphocytes they are a part of the blood okay they will be produced in excessive quantity and uh, they typically occur usually in weak immune system and and they need to get medication for that and so, the process of synobiotics has lots of adverse effects. Now, another things which we have is cosmetics. So, let's, you know, for example, phthalates. These are being found in nail polish, perfumes, and they can cause early puberty, breast cancer, weak estrogen production. You know, estrogen production is needed for the uh, proper functioning of the reproductive system in the case of uh, uh, females. So, that is an issue. Then, triclosan. It has been found even in uh, some of the uh, 
antibacterial soaps, deodorants and toothpaste, you have triclosan. That will affect your immune system. And you can have dioxin, which has been found in shampoos, body wear or body wash and even children bath products. And that has been found to be carcinogenic. Now, parabens, which are used in your underarm deodorants, eye products and all that, they can cause breast cancer, vision defects, endocrine receptors and lead. It is a contaminant in almost around 650 cosmetic products. And even now, you can also see that uh, even the toys of children, now, for example, the highly yellow colored uh, plastic toys, they will be mostly, if you uh, the analysis showed that the color yellow uh, with especially which has been found attractive in the case of the toys, they will also contain a component called lead. So that is a neurotoxin and it can cause uh, difficulties in learning languages and behavioral problems and it can also cause miscarriages to people. Uh, it could lead to reduced fertility and delays of puberty. So these are all cases. Then you also have polysaccharic aromatic hydrocarbons which could be present in the shampoos, lipsticks and uh, it could lead to skin and breast cancer. So the US Environmental Protection e Agency or the US EPA in short, they have a list of priority pollutants and uh, they could include pesticides, halogenated aliphatics or aromatics. Now for example halogenated means uh, aliphatic component is a substance which is having just carbon atoms and aromatic is which is having a benzene ring like. So if those halogenated aliphatics or aromatics are there they are also being considered to be as symbiotics. Then nitro aromatics you know benzene ring with a nitro group that is considered to be as a priority pollutant and chloro aromatics polychlorinated biphenyl. Okay, I will explain to you, uh, we will be learning PCBs. Uh, that is, when you have two phenyl molecules with lots of chlorines on it, it is called the polychlorinated biphenyls. Phthalate esters, as I mentioned earlier, phthalates, these are, uh, these are components which have been uh, found in plastics. Phthalates, bisphenol, these are all coming under plastics. Then the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, these are another examples of xenobiotics which are considered to be a strong pollutant and nitrosamines. So if you go to consider the different types of xenobiotics, there are a wide range. But in the coming sessions, uh, we would be talking on some of these xenobiotics uh, in detail. Now you need to learn what are recalcitrant halocarbons what are polychlorinated biphenyls, what are synthetic polymers, what are dioxins, what are alkyl benzene sulfonates, what are nitro aromatic compounds and what are hydrocarbons and why do they serve as xenobiotics. So in the coming sessions we will go through them. Uh, hope you got an understanding about what are xenobiotics and why they are harmful to us and why uh, they are being considered to be as strange to our body because they are not a part of our body and they enter into our body and once they enter into our body, they can be harmful to us. Okay. Of course, some of these antibiotics can be broken down by certain microorganisms and that do happen in the environment. But uh, when uh, xenobiotics enter into our body and persist in our body for a long time, what happens is they could cause a lot of uh, harmful effects to us. So with this, we come to an end of the introductory session of xenobiotics. Uh, thank you. You can put your comments uh, and uh, or if you want, you can even personally contact me uh, for your doubts. Thank you for